What's up, Brocam here. I'm going to show you with the overhead video how to turn this pile of parts into something like this. Mmm, sleek. First, I want to start off by saying if the audio is weird, I'm sorry. I'm using a new camera and my uh, old $10 microphone doesn't work with this camera for some reason. And my new uh, wireless mic, which I took a gamble on, uh, it just has a horrible whine whenever I use it. So uh, this is the onboard mic. This is the onboard mic. Uh, it's better on this camera than it was on the other camera. So hopefully it's not too bad. I'll see if I can do some post-processing to clean it up. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is take this antenna. What I did was as a backup, I, I stuck the antenna uh, to the back of this, just as an emergency backup antenna in case this were to get knocked or snapped off or something. All I gotta do is undo a couple screws and then pop that uh, IPEX connector off and put a new one up put that internal one on it's not going to be as much perform as performant but it's going to be good enough to get by i want to shout out to uh i think it's alley chat i think that's what i think that's their username on printables they designed and i assume they designed and uh put these out here for free there's a ton of different ways to do it this is the configuration i found worked the best was the uh, fat front frame and then the skinny back frame. Uh, but there's other different sizes. So you can get a big old fat back frame and a narrow front frame. It's kind of up to you. Um, I played around with these and this was the one that I liked the best. I'm gonna start off by putting this back here. And if I remember right, the connector is on this side. So, uh, think this will be good so I can route it or maybe this way I don't know I can't remember how I have it in the other one I'm gonna go however my heart feels and that feels like it feels this way there we go okay So listen to your heart. I'm gonna put it here. Like I said, it's not gonna be perfect, but it will be better than nothing. So, then it's just gonna sit in there like that. All right, so we can put that aside for now. Uh, the other thing I did on mine was I moved this speaker because that is just kind of in the way when you're trying to position this big old battery. Uh, if I remember right, there's nothing important behind it because I was really careful to take it off last time, but I think I can just maybe use this plastic spudger and, oh, don't, don't hit the wires. Just give it a little slow lift. You don't need to rip it all at once. Just, I can hear the glue coming. Okay, scoot it in a bit. There we go, there we go. So what I did was flip it up over here. Uh, and before I do that actually, actually no, it's fine. It wasn't an issue when I was soldering before. So we're just gonna put it right there. There we go. The soldering iron turned on. And I'm gonna do this part first. Zoom in here. So what, uh, I'm flipping the device over just so I can reach it with my iron. So this, these are the four pads we're gonna solder to for our GPS, which I realize now I did not put in the scene before. It is the same Wotec GPS module that I put in my Heltec V3s. 
So this is the uh, GPS module with the GPS antenna. And there's a spot right in the top frame for this to sit. I believe I stuck it like that. So we will do that in a minute. But for now, um, what we need to do, since we have to solder to these pads, there's four of them. One, two, three, four. Uh, this is very high temp, not very, but it's high temp solder that's on here. Uh, and the wires I'm going to be using is this uh, really thin electrical wire kit. Uh, don't fall in there. Dang it, now I gotta open the box. Um, it's very thin and I don't wanna melt the insulation. So I usually solder with this stuff at about 350, um, just what I find works the best. Uh, but that high, that stuff that's on the board already uh, takes about 400 to melt. So what I'm gonna do is melt it, turn the iron up to about 400, melt it, add some of my lower melt solder, and then come back in and connect my wires. Now, I don't know if mixing solder is a bad idea or not, but I've always seen that's what you do uh, when I watch other repair videos. So that is what I'm going to do. So let's turn the solder iron up to four. Looks good enough for me. All right, let's bring this guy back in. And wish I had some isopropyl here, because that is dirty and I can hardly read it. Well, I know this bottom one's ground, middle one's VC. Let's do, um, what I did last time was I, I worked middle out, because it's so small. I just figured that'd be easier to do middle out, so let's do VCC. Let's do T 
TX first, which is second from the top, which is yellow. I think, I think we're good there. And what I did on the other one was I put a piece of foam tape on the back. Some of this stuff that every junk drawer has. And uh, I just put it right, right about here. I'm gonna put it in the housing first, but before we do that, we are not done with the soldering iron yet. We have to put our uh, threaded inserts in, if I can get this open. This model does offer ways to do it without threaded inserts, like this one. You can print these and get little nuts to go in here. My nuts didn't fit in here, so uh, I said, hey, I'm gonna, I've never done threaded inserts on my 3D prints. I'm gonna get it and try it. So that's what I did. I printed the one without. Oh, that is loud. All right. And what you do with these is very cool. All you do is, is zoom on in. I'm having the hardest time opening this. Okay, you get your insert out. One, two, in frame. Then you're just going to take these. There's a uh, side that's got like uh, ridges on it, like that. That's the top. That's the bottom. Uh, actually, I don't know. I guess it could be either way, but I was doing that ridge is the top. So. They should just kind of sit in there. And then you just take your iron. Let me get the solder off of it. So I don't mess up the threads. And even with this big tip, you just kind of take it and stick it in there. And as it heats up, it will let you slowly push in. And you don't want to go too far, but you do want it to be at least flush if not a little more further down so now we're gonna let that cool same thing over here drop that in you just take your iron and stick it in the hole it slowly starts moving you don't have to apply a lot of force let the heat work all right and then Give it a little squeeze, maybe. I don't know if you have to. That's hot, be careful. Uh, give it a little squeeze just to, you know, smush all that filament up against it. So, now we are done soldering. Done with the soldering iron, we can turn that off. Okay, oh, I need to, <clears throat> I need to remove that. There's a little plug you can print to go in the hole, the antenna hole. All right, so this is the delicate part. You've gotta be very delicate here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna stick the bottom in first. I'm gonna kinda of use the, the charger hole to line it up there. Okay, so we're gonna stick bottom in first. Be mindful that uh, this very thin part of the keyboard here doesn't stick out past the front of the frame. And I'm gonna stick this in here. I'm gonna take the screen protector off for one, because I don't know if I can get it off. So let's take that off. Okay, going to stick this in here. And what we're going to do is kind of take your thumbs like this. Make sure you're not sticking that bottom frame out too far. Take your thumbs like this. We're going to 
uh, her thumbs push down with these fingers inside the frame we're going to spread out and just kind of don't force it just it should slide in with a little bit of force but not so much that you bend or break the board so there's a little ridge on the sides that kind of keeps it snapped in there okay so now that's in here um, I'm going to since I've done this before I know that this needs to go about here which is just right on top of this micro SD slot so I'm gonna cut a piece and stick that here uh, so that I am can be done with that piece And this is really just to keep it from rattling around. So this isn't this isn't necessary. It's just to make it a little easier or a little sound a little nicer when it's all put together. You don't shake it and have things rattle around. So there's that. Done. Let's stick um, our IPEX to SMA adapter in. That off. Unscrew these. Get our lock washers off. And then this is keyed. There is a flat spot here. Same thing with this hole. There's a flat spot. So we'll just line that up and Stick it in. Just like that. Again, don't force it. Don't force anything when you're doing any of this. Uh, bite washer, lock washer, and nuts. And I'm just using my thumb on the back here, just holding it in place while I screw this in. Okay. And then I just use some needle nose to uh, kind of give it a, the last few cranks once my big old sausage fingers can't fit down there anymore. Come on. Well, once more. There you go. Don't over tighten it. Again, we're working with plastic 3d printed parts so let's pull this out this one makes me nervous because it never wants to come out there it goes and that's a fragile connector so if you've never messed with one of these ipex connectors before let me zoom in for you just to show you what we're working with so this is the get a pointer stick this is where it connects to, right here. This is what the connecting side looks like. It's very thin. Cool. You, you want to focus for me? It'd be great if you focused for me. Bring it down a bit. Yeah, so here it is. So it's very thin metal. It's basically a coaxial cable. Um, you just have to be very careful. You want to line up the connector first and then push down. Uh, I have broken these before on laptops, back when I used to fix laptops uh, on the side. So you kind of want to, it'll kind of catch a little bit. And then you do have to give it a, more than you would think amount of force, and you'll hear it. Oh, you'll hear it. I promise you'll hear it. Uh, you didn't hear it. I lied. But when it, it kind of went in, what we need to do is get our GPS connector. And what I did on the last one, I think I'm gonna do again, is just put a drop of some CA on the top here to 
keep that up there from rattling around. I don't know if that's a bad idea or not to put glue on this part, but um, I figured, hey, these are like $12 parts, so if it breaks it, I will just buy another one. It's all about experimentation. So I just do the tiniest bit. I need to get a new bottle of glue. This stuff is, this, this stuff is horrible. <clears throat> okay. So we're just gonna take that and push it in. Hold it for a few seconds. All right, and this is the same kind of connector. It's that IPEX connector. Oh, let's see, it came down. I'll, I'll hold it more when I get this connector in. So let's take our connector here and uh, line it up. And actually I can just use my finger on this one. it's not right up against the side of the unit. There it goes. So now I want to kind of run this wire over here just because I know my battery's going to sit about here. I'm going to put some double face tape again to keep it from rattling around. Get, get over here. So just kind of run it up here. Let me stick I'm just, gonna stop. I'm just gonna wedge this in here for a second. And see if that lets it uh, dry in place. Okay, so I believe I did it like this. And my other ones, I'm gonna try and do the same thing. Get some double face tape, just a tiny, tiny piece. I'm gonna pay attention to make sure I don't stick it to the back of this ribbon cable because that would be bad if I ever had to take it off. I could tear that. And ribbon cables are no fun to fix. Okay. And now we're just gonna stick this in right here. I think we're good here, so let's get our backing. Make sure we're not gonna pinch nothing. I'm okay with folding that over a bit. Okay, and then let's just do that. And we need to get our screws. Let's see if these fires work. Okay. I would like it to be a little more flush, but I don't want to twist too hard and risk ripping those inserts out or spinning them in place. All right, so jumping forward from the future, I had quite a heck of a time. I hope I remember to put the note in when I was soldering about uh, checking, double checking for bridge solder joints. Uh, so uh, you can see I've got two now. I've got my original one I completed and the one that I was showing you in the video here. Uh, there's also a little sneak peek of some uh, upgrades to come. Uh, so let's set that one aside, but I, yeah, double check that you don't have bridge solder joints. I, I could see back in the video now, um, it's pretty small, but I definitely should have seen it at the time. It was um, very late when I was working on that. So uh, I did a couple things with it. Uh, so for one, if you'll notice here, my original one on the left, that is the 3D printed switch. The one on the right, that is uh, one of my own switches. 
And uh, what happened basically is that when I was putting this in, I knocked the switch a little bit and bent it up. And I assumed that that was the reason that this wasn't turning on. Um, but you know what happens when you assume, uh, you make an ass out of yourself. So uh, I had to, uh, I ended up pulling that switch off because I couldn't get to the backside to solder it. Uh, let me open this up and I'll show you kind of what I did here. Uh, once I had that apart, I did some testing and found out it still wasn't turning on. I had assumed that I killed the device. Uh, and then the more I looked at it, the more I noticed, uh, hey, there is a bridged solder joint. So uh, now it's not currently on, so I don't want to turn the light on here. Ooh, that is bright. Turn that bad boy down. Let's zoom in here. So what I've done here is it looks worse on the inside than it does from the outside. So I have my uh, custom switch here. And what I've done is I just soldered to the pads that were beneath it. And I put a piece of electrical tape on top to prevent shorting out to this metal body here. So uh, that is, that's how I repaired that. And then for up here, uh, it's hard to see with the antenna uh, IPEX SMA cable. Uh, I've got this connector all chewed up because I was just, some reason this connector was just a lot harder for me to solder. And I don't know if that's manufacturing differences. If you look at this one, this is a white trackball one, whereas this one's a black trackball one. So I know that it's just kind of random what trackball you get and what keyboard you get sometimes, but so I don't know if that's the difference or, or what, but this one was much harder to solder. And it, uh, once I cleared that out and I re-soldered everything, it was, uh, and I put it back together, it was fine. Uh, it turned right on, uh, to my surprise. I really thought that I had killed it so it's on, um, I'll throw something up here about setting it up, uh, but I also took the speaker, there's a speaker grill here on the side of the device. I went ahead and just did a little, a couple drops of CA on the side and stuck that to the side there. And uh, I think that, you know, probably get a little better notification sound out of it. And then finally, the last thing I did was, remember how I talked about putting this in the back here? I'm still doing that, but I noticed I was having issues with this antenna cord going down into this groove, which is where uh, this hooks into. So I just took a little piece of electrical tape and taped it back, just so it's out of the way. So let me close this back up, and we can go over setting the device up. Configuring this is exactly the same as configuring this. Uh, but one thing that I've noticed with uh, this device is that you have to do, uh, to use this as a standalone device, uh, if you set your default channel to long fast, you have to do some keyboard uh, shortcuts. You have to do Alt C, Alt T, and you have to do that twice to be able to get to change your, your uh, channel to whatever you want to send it to. So what I've done, since this is supposed to be for my wife, I'm trying to lower the barrier to entry to make this just as pick up and easy to use as possible. You just pick it up and start typing. <clears throat> and it's already on our talk group, which you know I've shown before we've called farm. So uh, we can say uh, I'm at the, the hill. There we go. And that sends over to here to uh, my berry. So th that just lowers the barrier to entry to um, for somebody to pick this up and they start typing that they know it goes to your specific talk group. So that's just a configuration thing. That's a preference thing. Um, there's still the ability to use those channels on here. I'm going to include a laminated card uh, with the uh, with the little pack that I'm making that's going to have a radio and everything in it that explains, hey, if you need to change to long fast or something, use Alt-C-T, Alt-C-T, 
and then you can scroll and change it to that. So leave a comment, what do you think about this? I love that this lowers the barrier to entry one. It just has a keyboard you can type on and hit send. It also has a, uh, it, it removes a uh, point of failure. So if you have your cell phone and you drop it and the screen breaks or the battery dies or whatever, uh, this one right here, you can't do anything with. You know, uh, sneak peek to where I'm gonna be adding this, to where you can at least send some messages, some canned messages. But, uh, you know, with these, once you set them up, you're good to go. They just they just work. They just, you know, uh, given you're within the mesh and you're within range, uh, they just work. So I really like these, but I do even have a, a, a third one of these coming that I would like to uh, do, do a similar thing with. Um, I did just get a 900 megahertz antenna for my truck. So I would like to have one of these devices live in there and that will just be kind of my uh, on the go beacon. Be sure to subscribe if you wanna see how to add a rotary encoder to your Helltech V3. That's all the time I have for today. Thank you, 73.